If you want to add visual interest to lifeless layouts, try adding depth. I'm going to show you live website examples to demonstrate 10 different techniques that you can use to give the perception of depth on a flat screen. This will not only improve the visual appearance of your website, but also help to make sense of your layout by establishing foreground and background elements. Flat layers, number one, as simple as that. These images here that have been overlaid, we can see the logos on this black field, are making no attempt at skeuomorphism, trying to look like something in the real world. They simply appear one over another as they scroll. But what's really cool about this is it's a storytelling aspect to it. So we go back to the top, we see the headline, the logos come up, and then it kind of just moves through to the next sentence, some more logos, then we roll to these bullet points. So it's just a simple way to give us a sense of depth, but more emphasis on the story. These layers are also flat, these cards, although they kind of grow and shrink and they overlap one another, they are actually flat. There's no shadows or anything going on here. These cards are totally flat on this portfolio site, which is actually built in Webflow. Similarly here, just by having the title type behind this main black rectangle, it just gives that sense of depth. And this is the same uh, style that they use on their album artwork. And we also have these transparent images coming over the top. So even just using flat layers and putting one thing in front of another can work. Number two, shadows. On Notion site, there's a great example of the fact that just showing a screen grab of something digital looks really flat, but actually, by having these rounded corners and then a little bit of a shadow here on this kind of tablet or desktop view. And then for this phone mobile type interface, we've just got a white stroked edge on a rounded rectangle, similar proportions to a phone and the drop shadows and the layers just add interest to something which looks kind of boring and doesn't really distinguish itself from the rest of the content on the website if you don't. So even you as a website designer putting together your portfolio, just having a little bit of depth or perspective or using shadows in this way will kind of make those screen grabs of websites really sort of stand out and look more pleasing. Also on this site, we just have these sort of flat layers over the top of each other in this hero section. But as we scroll through, there's just little subtle shadows on these cards and they just help them really sort of um, pop out from uh, the background here. We have this little bit of 3D movement as well. See here, there's a, a shadow on this bigger section to just distinguish it from the part below. On this site for Balson who make biscuits, we can see some sort of depth here. We've actually got a lighter color with a logo in the background and the type over the top, but they make use of shadows. So we've got these quite harsh shadows on each one of the biscuits here and the kind of, it moves with it. And if these, individual treats were cut out without any shadow, they would look a bit odd just sat on that flat background. So it can definitely work for something that's a physical object where we expect to see a shadow when it's lit in the real world, but it can also work, you know, with other sort of interface elements as well. Number three, transparency. So if we begin to scroll on this website, this headline here that says issue number one, bioregioning, I didn't know that was a word, actually it becomes transparent. So we get more of a sense of the layers here and then these three options below become more visible and it actually stays very faintly in the background here. So it just gives us a little bit of depth and a little bit more interest than if this was just a plain white field. Similarly with this site, all the navigation items, and it's kind of this maximalism style, you know, of kind of all the options just being laid out there. Um, it's kind of a very brutalist, you know, an aesthetic choice, but these are just transparent. And then when you roll over them, they go to full opacity on either side, or it brings the image from opaque up to a full screen background video. So it's a clever little uh, technique and it feels really interactive. It makes you want to move around the site. 
This is also a transparent headline here at the bottom where it says Spring Summer 24 on Reigns. This is a brand I like. I've got one of their bags hanging up here in the studio. And just by allowing the colours of the images underneath, you know, just to shine through, it's just a really subtle transparent effect. And a similar related effect, number four, is blend modes. And you can set these now, you know, within your web development software or in the code, whatever you're using. So if you look now at this type for this headline where it says Kieran Clark and also these navigation elements, as we scroll, we can see it looks like the colors changing, but it's actually a blend mode. So it's adjusting to whatever sort of type is behind it. So it goes to black now. It's on this lighter gray background, but when it was in this black part of the photograph, it was white. And this is just a really stylistic thing. And we kind of get this really odd effect with the word mark of the name when there is black and gray type underneath. So it becomes a really interesting aesthetic choice. Similarly, on this website, this time we have colors in the background. So when we see the green in the background, we have this purple here for a blend mode, which gives us you know, a lot of interest. And it kind of makes us want to hang around for a moment um, just enjoying this and just noticing how it um, changes as the site uh, moves through. This site has been really well put together as well. It's just a blend mode, but because the video is changing so much, we're getting lots of different colors and textures here and subtle gradients coming through in the type. And again, if this was just a white type, it wouldn't have as much interest uh, here. And this makes us want to just take this in a little bit more. Number five is blur. This gives a sense of depth because when we see photographs, it tends to be that the thing that is closer to the lens or the subject of the photograph is sharp and in focus. And then things that are far away, the backgrounds um, are blurred out when we have a shallower depth of field. So you can mimic that kind of effect and, and just the the general sense that happens in our eye as well of things further away being a bit blurry. So this hero section here has these gradient images, these orbs that grow and shrink and change color. And there it's very clear that they are the ground and the type is the form. We have the foreground and the background elements. Similarly, with this side, as we actually scroll, you can see this central navigation with just these four options here is actually built on uh, a transparent background that actually blurs the information underneath it. So whatever color that is, this will start to get a bit darker now, but because that is transparent and blurred, it means that the navigation is always clear and is always visible, even when we have black type on black type again. On this site for Powell Studio, the blur actually moves with the cursor and it blurs underneath the images that are on top, giving us a sense of depth and also a nice little interactive element. Number six, we can actually use 3D space. So this uh, website for a video production company, as I move around to the left, I gave the sense that I'm moving through this 3D space because this word mark is changing in perspective and so are all these thumbnails around it. On this side, it's done a little bit more subtly where the perspective kind of moves mainly to the left and right, not massively up and down, but this central black field with these images on it kind of looks like a TV. It just subtly moves and so does the the the, the base, the kind of 3D floor that we have, it looks like a concrete texture at the bottom to give us a sense of depth in 3D space. And these kind of things are, can be achieved with JavaScript or some, with something like Spline. So they showcase their tool themselves on their website. So if I actually click and drag, I can actually orbit around in 3D space through X, Y, and Z axis. And so this is the kind of thing, we've got a couple of Spine tutorials spine spline tutorials here on our channel as well so you can start to experiment with this kind of thing for yourself nextly you can use depth within images themselves just in composition so like on the zoe website these images here they've just overlaid two rounded rectangles one of them is transparent on the top so you can just you know make that image you can export that as a jpeg 
and have a little bit of depth there. Similar to the, the kind of the notion example we had earlier with the shadows on the interface. Or something like this is we could be into scroll on this side. This is actually interactive. Underneath the phone, we have these avatars in circles that pop out, the menu pops down, and it lets us know how this app actually works. And that's a really cool use of kind of depth within uh, this image or this composition itself. Apple Fitness also do this. They have these masked images of athletes and then they have the interface elements behind them these rings that are on the Apple watch and there's a few of these through the site so if we just had this image you see on a plain field or even worse if this was just cropped into a rectangle on like a white background it it would just it wouldn't look like it belongs so much and it wouldn't really tell the story but this is storytelling because we have an actual element here of the interface with the heart rate and it really connects us more to what the product is all about and there's one more here with the idea of the rings filling up so we're connecting we're telling the story because we're connecting the person who is using the product by doing this and that's just within this image itself number eight is photo on photo and this is a style that I really like as we scroll through uh, this site here we can see that the photo of the model is actually just overlaid and it actually appeared there if we just scroll again it grows from the center on a field of this this canopy here of trees and this is just a, a graphic design kind of style trick that you can use and it can produce this this really interesting contemporary looking effect they use this later on actually with these specific products that when you actually roll over each one of these panels the product appears in the middle and it blurs the background uh, photograph but then it just creates this sort of textural background element that's very soft so you could do this by blurring a background but you could also just do it with both images on focus and that's just an interesting uh, kind of stylistic way to add depth another way of using photos on photos is on this site and as we roll over each of these options here in the left navigation we have the main image that is at full transparency but then we have a darker background image underneath and we're able to have this again it just serves as a background because um, the opacity has maybe been lowered or it's kind of you know got a black feel over the top it just pushes it into the background and we know the foreground is the brighter image and this just makes again more visual interest in our composition brings the whole thing together number nine is masks so just cutting out uh, images and being able to then overlay them in layers so the fact here that this stone has been masked and it overlays this type makes that a lot more interesting if you can imagine that stone being smaller and just set on a white field in the center of this composition then it would be quite a strange uh, sense of proportion with all these medium sized elements but now we have this main element that that dominates so the proportion is better but it also it just looks more considered because it overlaps the type pretty simple but when done well it just adds a little uh, flourish and makes the thing look more deliberate it could also do something like this so this is actually interacting with my mouse as I move around then when I stop moving these photographs move away but each one of them is just cut out and masked and they just appear over the top of each other you know and it's just kind of a really strange sort of quirky thing but it fits the personality of this website and this headline born curious so it's just a way to have masked images kind of overlaying one another on this site I, we see as I kind of just move my cursor something is kind of cutting through it's, it's encouraging us to do something here and as we actually scroll the logo word mark grows let me just do that again and you see the F grows to fill the screen and it actually masks the video underneath if I do this quite slowly until it appears full screen so you can actually use masks as a transition element as well 
And here we also have kind of the photo on photo thing with some of these crops. And finally, number 10 is parallax scrolling. So here, first of all, we have some flat layers, this word mark, how it overlaps both the white background and the photograph here. And as we scroll, this word mark is going to get smaller and smaller. And parallax scrolling, let me close this pop-up, simply just means things scrolling at different speeds. So we go into this second panel here with the issue and then the specific articles within it. But as we keep scrolling, the issue stays in place in the left column and the right column begins to scroll for a moment. Let's just do that again before the left one then starts to scroll. We have the parallax effect here as well with this full width advert. If I start to scroll over that, we see that the type stays in position there and this mask that goes over the top of the image changes at a different speed. This site too makes use of a lot of these different things. We've already seen it actually for this blur uh, at the top, that same sort of effect. But we also have this parallax scrolling as we move down, the image stays on the left, the right column continues to move first, and it's a bit more pronounced here. We also have this idea of 3D space with this spinning globe, and that feels like it's turning at a different speed to the type on the left. Again, as this part comes into view, these horizontal uh, little rounded cards here for all these different artists, they will scroll independently. So just having things scroll at different speeds just make things feel a bit more, there's a bit more physics going on. And for the final website, this is using parallax, but it's this is kind of using everything. <laughs> this is just a really kind of uh, wild website. So it looks uh, pretty unremarkable at the moment. We just have almost black type on this sort of off-white background, kind of a light gray, beigey kind of background. We have a little bit of blending modes going on here, but as we scroll, we start to have these other sort of elements of uh, storytelling that come into this. So we have these flat layers here, but we also have a, a blending mode. So all the type is actually for the captions of each um, title is actually a blending mode here. Looks like these guys worked on webflow.com. That's pretty cool. And then we have this idea of 3D space as um, these all these different rectangles kind of move through. And we also have the blending mode here. As we continue to scroll, we have these different flat background elements and they're changing. It's parallax scrolling. Everything's moving at different speeds. Then we have a mask that is brought in here. So they're actually using a lot of different elements here because it's a web design agency and they really want to showcase their capabilities. If we just refresh the site, we can actually see this this orbs loaded. It wasn't there the last time. So they also have this sense of a 3D space here and an interactive element. And that is also showcasing the blending modes even more as this moving orb uh, moves through the site with us. The sites that are most effective here are not just using depth, but also paying attention to a number of layout principles. It takes both guidance and years of experience to become a master of layout. So if you'd like to learn more, just search layout on our channel as I've made a bunch of videos on this very topic. And secondly, start experimenting with these concepts in your own work. Until next time, happy designing.